To this very day, numerous media outlets, historians, and internet personalities have perpetuated a narrative surrounding the Soviet Union that serves to demonize the USSR. The influence of McCarthyism and Red Scare propaganda has ensured that the Cold War mentality has lived on in much of the Western world, with Western governments and media maintaining a staunch anti-communist pogrom. The United States, for example, is one of the champions of the anti-communist field, with former President Donald Trump even declaring at one point that the USA would never be a socialist country. Much of this anti-communist Cold War sentiment has been furthered in the USA's crusade against China, as perpetuated by both the Trump administration and the current Biden presidency. It's important to remember that the narrative pushed by the West and the USA in particular for nearly a century is full of falsehoods, misconceptions, and distortions designed to make capitalism look like it's the only viable system for society. History has shown that this narrative is nothing but false, with the achievements of former socialist countries providing a picture of what a viable alternative to capitalism could be. There are many contemporary examples of socialist powers and societies striving for socialism displaying massive achievements. But it's vital to remember the achievements of the very first successful socialist revolution and the first legitimate socialist country, the Soviet Union, particularly under the leadership of Joseph Stalin, one of the biggest targets of this bastardizing of history and the preservation of anti-communist influence. And so I bring to you 10 major achievements of the Soviet Union under Stalin. Number 10, making anti-Semitism illegal. Many governments and societies have introduced legislation that has made racist, sexist, and anti-Semitic actions, among other similar activities, punishable in some form or another, at least in theory. But for the longest time, and even to a strong degree in the modern age, such legislation either didn't exist, or was enforced in such a manner that people were finding loopholes upon loopholes in these bills and laws. Numerous political parties, organizations, and governments have scapegoated Jewish people and Judaism as a whole as the cause of the problems that are ultimately caused by the nature of capitalism, with the Nazis in Germany being one of the most extreme and historically significant cases. The Soviet Union, however, would have none of that. Stalin himself indicated that anti-Semitism had no place in the Soviet Union, calling it a vestige of misanthropic cannibalism. It was emphasized that communists and socialists should be vehemently against anti-Semitism, with the fight against it being an extension of the fight for workers' internationalism. In line with socialist internationalism, anti-Semitism was explicitly prohibited during Stalin's leadership. Number 9. Women's Rights the advancement of women in society is one of the most important aspects of the fight for building and maintaining socialism. In the 1920s, the Soviets experienced a rise in women's representation in various forms, from government, unions, schools, and similar institutions. By the late 20s, women in various parts of the USSR made up a decent portion of membership for such institutions as the All-Union Central Executive Committee, trade unions, and the Communist Party itself. Women also made up a third of students in college and other forms of higher education. Compare this to the USA in the same time period. By the 1930s, there weren't even 10 women in the US Senate or House of Representatives. Higher education prospects for women in the US was at a much higher percentage than women in political power, However, there's still the factor of time that we need to consider. The Soviet Union had only existed for about 10 years when women made up the aforementioned one-third of college students, whereas the U.S. had been in existence for approximately 150 years when the percentage of women in college finally reached around 30 to 40 percent. Number 8. Not Glorifying Alcohol How many beer ads might you see on TV or on the internet? You'll see advertisements for Coors Light and Budweiser and Smirnoff and just a plethora of other refreshments designed to make you feel like a million bucks, even if in reality it makes you look like a dirty penny. At least for those in various Soviet government offices, alcohol consumption was nothing to be advertised or glorified. 
Granted, many modern ads do say to drink responsibly, but the Soviets tried to help people avoid drinking in general. Soviet officials, union leaders, and other such figures promoted the use of free time for more productive tasks, such as reading, and other things designed for self-improvement. Essentially, anti-alcohol forces attempted to prevent workers from potentially falling into the trench of alcoholism. While many workers did continue to consume alcohol, primarily in displays of mutual respect, or, you know, holidays, that kind of thing, it's commendable that various Soviet outlets engaged in a campaign promoting sobriety and the betterment of oneself. Number 7. Eliminating Illiteracy Education in the Soviet Union was seen as a vital right to all people in the USSR, regardless of race, age, sex, or anything else of the sort. As a result of the incredibly poor educational prospects of Russia under Tsarism, the vast majority of the population was illiterate, with only a very minuscule section of the country being able to read and write. The new socialist government understood that this could not stand, and so a campaign began to completely eliminate illiteracy all throughout the Soviet Union. Thus began the Likbez Decree. This campaign began under Lenin in the very early stages of the Soviet Revolution, with Stalin continuing and developing the Likbez program for people ages 6 to 50. These programs were extremely effective. In the early 20th century, the literate population of Russia hovered around 22%. By the early years of World War II, the literacy rate had risen to 90%. Number 6. Guaranteed Health Care The United States has never guaranteed health care as a human right in the entirety of its existence. Guaranteed health care, when proposed, is commonly shot down by various officials for various reasons, ranging from opposing the idea because universal health care is immediately associated with communism, despite the fact that a number of capitalist countries offer it, but whatever, or because enacting such a thing would damage profits for private medicine. Upon the establishing of the USSR, private medicine would become a thing of the past. Healthcare in the Soviet Union was considered some of the best in the world. After creating a plethora of medical facilities with varying specialties accessible to both those in the city and the countryside, the solidifying of healthcare as an inalienable right for the Soviet people only continued with the ratifying of the 1936 Constitution. As outlined in the Soviet Constitution, healthcare was made a guaranteed right for all people for no cost. Number 5. Helping Synthesize Marxism-Leninism Stalin always considered himself to be a student and follower of Lenin. He, along with others, believed that Lenin brought about some of the greatest advancements in Marxist theory and analysis, with his contributions through such works as the State and Revolution, among others, expanding upon the theories of Marx and Engels to create a concrete scientific method and analysis for enacting and upholding a socialist revolution. It was through Stalin's analysis, writings, and practice that the theories of Marx and Lenin were thoroughly synthesized via the foundations of Leninism. The writings of Marx and Engels serve as a strong foundation for the development and advancement of communist theory, with vital critiques of capitalism also a very big part of that. Combined with Lenin's analysis of how to build and maintain a revolution, along with a scathing analysis of imperialism, the synthesis of Marxism-Leninism became the basis for almost every major socialist revolution in the 20th century. Number 4. Legitimate Racial Equality For a decent portion of the Afro-descendant population of the United States, the Soviet Union served as a viable living alternative for those in the West facing a constant stream of systematic racism and a white supremacist hierarchy. Both significant historical figures and everyday people were able to enjoy the benefits of living under socialism, with the Soviet Union rejecting the US-style racial hierarchy and ensuring a legitimate manifestation of social, economic, and political equality for black people. 
The experiences of Claude McKay and Paul Robeson in particular, however, astutely explained the polar differences between the Soviet Union and the Jim Crow Society of the United States, with Paul Robeson even exclaiming in his 1956 testimony at the House Committee of Un-American Activities. In Russia, I felt for the first time like a full human being. No color prejudice like in Mississippi, no color prejudice like in Washington. It was the first time I felt like a human being. Number three, surviving the Great Depression. The conditions of Russia required that the industrial and productive forces of the country be put into development, effectively controlled, and strengthened at a rapid pace so as to properly pull Russia out of the semi-feudal conditions that characterized life under Tsarism. It was during Stalin's time as General Secretary of the CPSU that the five-year plan was established, essentially an economic and industrial goal set by the Soviets in order to rapidly and successfully industrialize Russia along with many of its surrounding neighbors. Thanks to the five-year plan, the Soviet Union experienced an immense amount of economic growth and development during a time where such achievements seemed almost impossible. The Great Depression, also known as one of the biggest global economic catastrophes in history. For example, in 1932, the USSR saw an over 300% rise in its industrial output, whereas the United States at the same time saw an 84% drop in its own industrial output. This is only one of many examples of the five-year plan displaying a superiority over the cyclical nature of capitalism and crisis. Number two, maintaining a positive legacy in Russia. Despite the numerous attempts at slandering the history and legacy of actually existing socialism from Western media, there are still many that are able to see past the veil of the imperialist narrative and realize that the historical power and achievements of the Soviet Union is something to be admired and inspired by. Russia in particular, at least with a certain section of the population, maintains that the Stalin era is considered to be one of the most prosperous eras of Russian history, leading to the betterment of millions of lives. According to a poll published by the Levada Center, as touched upon in an article from the Moscow Times, Stalin is seeing a rise in popularity. As of 2019, 70% of the people in this particular survey said that Stalin played a positive role in Russia's development and in the general betterment of Russian society as a whole. I may be cheating a bit because this isn't directly an achievement of the Soviet Union under Stalin, but it does show that the legacy of the Soviet Union as an admirable historical figure worthy of good faith analysis and study is in some way or another beginning to outweigh the negative narratives often perpetuated against Stalin and the Soviet Union in general. Number one, defeating fascism in World War II. The Western narrative of World War II has made it commonplace to claim that the United States carried the bulk of the weight during the giant global conflict, with Britain and the Soviet Union basically taking a secondary role. This is just another example of American exceptionalism being utilized to reinforce a revisionist history in favor of the U.S. While, yes, the contributions of the U.S. and Britain were overall significant, the bulk of the fighting against the Nazi forces came from the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union endured some of the most destructive battles in the entire war, with bloodshed levels being noticeably higher than the other allies. To quote an article from Fightback News, the USSR lost 27 million of her citizens in the war, by far the most of any country in the European conflict. Many of them were killed in combat, but millions more were murdered in POW camps and concentration camps, or were among the civilians massacred or starved by the invaders. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you could like it. Maybe you could give your thoughts on it in the comments. Maybe you could send it to some of your friends. If you have the means to and would like to, you can also support me on Buy Me A Coffee. Donations can either be a one-time thing, or you can sign up for a $5 a month membership. My name is Jimmy. Thank you for watching.